It's now time for member's statement. I recognize the member from Aurora, New Market. Thank you, Speaker. And of the 197 local riding events in which I participated over the summer, 17 of these were announcements pertaining to investments in my great riding of Newmarket Aurora. The one that I want to speak to this morning is about the one that was held on June the 3rd in Newmarket, where alongside the Minister of Health, we confirmed that our government commitment to invest in the building of the new York Region Mental Health and Community Care Hub. This is a facility that will streamline access to high-quality mental health and addiction services. More than six years ago, I had discussions regarding gaps in our local mental health services with the Canadian Mental Health Addictions York and South Simcoe. And that day, on July the 3rd, 2024, I delivered on my commitment to support this innovative hub that will be a 24-7 specialized community care facility for individuals 12 and above who need immediate mental health support, including 20 short-stay beds. This will be for ages 16 and over. It will connect people to the needed care sooner and offer culturally appropriate services. Speaker, this is just the beginning. I continue to deliver on my commitments to my community, which are focused on ensuring the well-being and growing of our economy. Thank you. Member statement. I recognize the member from Hyde Park. Thank you, Speaker. During Remembrance Week, we participate in traditional service, wear poppies, and observe a moment of silence to honour those who died serving our country in wars and in peacekeeping efforts. In Parkdale High Park, two local teachers, Katie Whitfield and Ian De Silva, started a community commemoration project in 2020 called They Walked the Streets. We remember them. It is a project to learn about and remember the soldiers in our community who served in the First and Second World Wars and never returned by sharing their stories. To remember that those who made the ultimate sacrifice in the wars weren't only soldiers, they were people just like us. They were fathers and brothers, sons and daughters, neighbors and friends. They lived lives just like ours. They walked the same streets. Every soldier's story is told using an info card that documents their military service, accompanied by a QR code that allows the viewer to connect with the Canadian Virtual War Memorial website, which provides more detail and documents about the soldier's war experience. The info cards also features the logo and schools of schools and churches they attended. This initiative has grown to 11 memorial sites with stories of over 1,300 soldiers from Humbercrest, Bloor West Village, The Junction, High Park, Swansea, Roncesvalles, and Parkdale. This type of storytelling helps community members connect with the soldiers' experiences and helps the neighbourhood understand how it had been impacted by the world wars and by the loss of young men who served and who died in the wars. Speaker, Katie and Ian have dedicated this project to all those who served, those who came home, and those who continue to serve for Canada. I ask the House to join me in thanking them for their dedication to ensure that we will never forget. Thank you. I recognize the member from Etobicoke. Sure. Well, thank you, Madam Speaker. And it was a true honour and privilege last week to be part of a very important announcement in my riding of Etobicoke Lakeshore to expand the Ontario Fertility Program. On October the 24th, I joined the Minister of Health and the Minister of Finance for the announcement of a $150 million investment to help families in need receive publicly funded fertility treatments. It is an issue that many women and families have thought about and more than you think some of your friends and families have experienced. In my own conversations with several women in my community and across the province, the stories come up time and time again. In 2019, Minister Tangri and I both co-authored a letter to then Minister of Health, Christine Elliott. Today I want to acknowledge all the brave voices from my riding and across the province who have shared their struggles in their fertility journey with me. 
I also want to give a special shout out to Repo Med Facility in Etobicoke Lakeshore, where this announcement was made. During the announcement, I got a chance to witness firsthand this amazing facility that has helped numerous couples struggling with infertility build their families. With their valuable knowledge and technology to achieve more successful patient outcomes, the Repo Med team has given a lifeline for families whose dreams of having children felt impossible. To all the individuals and families from Etobicoke Lakeshore and across Ontario who have shared their personal journeys with me and advocated for this cause, help is here. This expansion will triple the number of families connected to government-funded fertility services. This truly reflects our PC government's commitment to support families across our province. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for University, Rosedale. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, this is a letter. I'd like to read it out. It's from Karen, George and Rebecca Amaro. Our daughter, Alexandra Amaro, was killed on her bike as she left Dufferin Mall on December 2, 2020. Alex was 23. Like a lot of city kids, she didn't yet have her driver's license. Her bike was her ride. There are no words to describe the everlasting, devastating heartbreak of living with such sudden tragic loss, especially knowing that it was preventable. Guaranteed that if either of you or anyone within Ontario's Legislative Assembly lost a family member or a close friend so tragically while cycling city streets, this pre-election push to restrict bike lanes within Toronto and other municipalities would not be on the table. Minister Sakaria, you say that this bike lane legislation is about giving people more time with their families. Our family would give anything to have more time with Alex, to hug her, to speak with her, to celebrate holidays and life milestones, to see what a difference she would be making in this world today. Please drop this aggressive attack on cyclists and turn your attention to delivering action in other areas that is your responsibility, like affordable housing. Sincerely, Karen, George and Rebecca Amaro, Alex's parents and sister. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Peterborough, Kawartha. Good morning, Speaker. I got a text from Billy Walker telling me to speak slower. <laughs> Saturday, October 26th, was the start of the Kinsman Super TV bingo season. This season is the 28th year that the Kinsmen have been broadcasting from Chex TV studios in Peterborough. When TV Bingo first moved to Chex, it was owned by Power Broadcasting and it was a CBC affiliate. Now it's a global affiliate owned by Chorus Entertainment. I bring this up because Super TV Bingo has become such an institution. It's survived multiple owners of the station and two different broadcast affiliates. Reed Manley has been the driving force behind Bingo since Peterborough Kinsman took over the broadcast. You can catch him behind the camera calling bingo on Saturday nights at 7 o'clock just before Hockey Night in Canada. Daryl Junkin and Dave Ronson also share duties with Reed as the bingo callers. When they aren't on camera, they're doing other tasks behind, behind the scenes. And I have to tell you, Speaker, it actually is an awful lot of fun. I volunteer on the phones on most Saturdays myself. But what it really does is it provides a huge resource for our communities from the GTA to Gravenhurst and all the way east past Brockville. Last year alone, $650,000 was given to over 350 organizations like the Campbellford Memorial Hospital, Camp Maple Leaf, the Bowmanville Salvation Army, Gananoque Food Bank, Hospice North Hastings, Cornerstone Family Violence Prevention Center, Community Living Georgina, Kawartha Food Share, Brock Mission, and more than 30 school breakfast programs. Thank you to all the kin members who give up their time to serve the community's greatest needs. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Nickel Belt. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, we all know now that this province is going $3 billion further into debt so that the government can send a $200 check to every adult and child in this province. If the government thinks that that will make the people of Ontario forget that they don't have a family doctor, their home care workers doesn't show up half the time, their kids can't drink the water in their school because of old lead pipe. I think they're dreaming, Speaker. 
I suppose the family can spend this uh, money on a tablet and uh, streaming service so they can sit for 20 to 30 hours or longer in the emergency department or use that money for extra gas to drive to the next town because the emergency department in their community has been shut down. As Ontarians decide how to spend the 200 bucks, the government has borrowed on their behalf 2,000 people sick enough to be admitted into a hospital will be in a hallway or a bathroom. Cancer patients still pay out of pocket for take our cancer drugs. Children's Aid Society in Algoma in North Bay are close to bankruptcy. 30,000 children are on the wait list for mental health services and 73,000 on the autism wait list. Parks and communities across our province are filled with homeless encampment, not to mentioning no movement on the four laning of Highway 69. Yet, this Premier, this government is ignoring this problem and adding $3 billion to the deficit in a shameless attempt to buy votes. Thank you very much. Members' statements. The member for Richmond Hill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today, I rise to celebrate the vibrant festival of Diwali, also known as the Festival of Lights. Observed by millions around the world, including many in my own riding, a diverse community in my own riding of Richmond Hill, as well as in Ontario. As the lights of Diwali is to illuminate our homes, they remind us of the shared values of love, peace, and togetherness that unite us all, regardless of our backgrounds. In my writing in Richmond Hill, it is a rich, it is a rich tapestry of cultures, homes to diverse community, including Iranian, Jewish, Chinese, Italian, and many others. Each group contributes to the vibrant fabric of our society, particularly our lively South Asian population. As we celebrate Diwali, let us remember the importance of inclusivity and the strength that come from our differences. I encourage everyone to join in the festivities, whether through the community events or simply sharing the joy of this special occasion with friends and neighbors. To all those celebrating Diwali in Richmond Hill and beyond, I wish you all a joyful festival filled with love and light. May the coming year bring you peace and happiness. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Don Valley East. Mr. Speaker, yesterday I listened intently as the Minister of Finance delivered his fall economic statement. If it made one thing clear, it's that this government's priorities are not Don Valley East's priorities. But this isn't surprising, coming from a Premier who said this summer that Don Valley East is, and I quote, a sleepy little neighbourhood in the suburbs that no one goes to. My constituents tell me about their struggles finding a family doctor. They tell me how frustrating it is to drive down Eglinton and see empty crosstown tracks without any sign of the LRT. They tell me how expensive their rent is and how long it takes to get landlord-tenant issues resolved at the LTB. The fall economic statement offered far too little for my constituents. There is no funding to increase the number of family doctors, no plan to finally open the endlessly delayed Eglinton Crosstown, and there is not even a mention of the Landlord-Tenant Board, let alone a plan to address the backlog. Now we all notice that the government has tried to promise a one-time check. That check might help pay the first month's rent, but not the second. It might help pay the first week's groceries, but not the next. It might help pay for a child's winter coat, but not their winter boots. This government offered nothing to help bring down the cost of homes or groceries, create better paying jobs, or deliver any kind of permanent tax relief for small businesses or everyday Ontarians. With that said, there was one thing that the Minister of Finance said, which I do agree with. There is so much more work to do. I just wish it was more for you. Thank you very much. I recognize the member for Bay of Quinte. Thank you, Speaker. 
I rise today to talk about the 28th annual Quinty Business Achievement Awards that took place at the National Air Force Museum of Canada last Friday. And I have to say, if you are coming through Quinty West, you must stop at the National Air Force Museum. Absolutely incredible. I'd like to thank all the organizers, volunteers, the Chamber of Commerce, and everyone who worked so hard to make this event truly incredible. Speaker, I'd like to take a moment to congratulate all the winners this year. For Retail Business of the Year, Craft Village. Hospitality Tourism Business of the Year, Myers Creek Brewing Company. For Regulated Professions Business of the Year, Hitchens Hearing Center. Trades and Construction Services Business of the Year, Luke Joseph Carpentry. Manufacturing Business of the Year, JBS Foods Ontario. Young Entrepreneur of the Year, Brandon O'Quinn. New Business of the Year, Base 31. New Business of the Year, uh, Mike and Lori's Garden. Not-for-Profit of the Year, the Alzheimer's Society. Tech Sector Business of the Year, Rylea Technologies, Inc. Business Person of the Year, Tim McKinney. Agribusiness of the Year, Cheer Farms. Health and Wellness Business of the Year, Fearless Wellness Center. Sustainability of the Year, Afia Beauty. Trailblazer of the Year, Global Med, Inc., DBA Aptics, and Business Excellence, McDougal Insurance. Congratulations to all the winners and all the nominees as well for everything that you're doing for business and for our community in Bay of Quinte. Thank you very much, and let's give them a round of applause. The next member's statement, the member for Perth Wellington. Trick or treat, Speaker. There may be little ghosts and goblins running around this evening, but what we really need to be afraid of is the federal liberal NDP coalition government haunting our paychecks, taking more money out of our pockets. Ontarians know this bone-chilling reality too well. When 300,000 manufacturing jobs vanished into thin air and energy prices rose from the grave to haunt our wallets. But beware. With the Crombie Liberals, we're not only stepping into the dream world, we're opening up Pandora's jack-o'-lantern, where budgets balance themselves and money grows on trees under a full moonlight. Uh, don't say carbon tax, carbon tax, carbon tax three times fast in front of a mirror, or carbon tax Crombie will appear and take all of your money. <laughs> and what's this, Speaker? Another traffic nightmare on Bloor Street. Another frightful inconvenience for Ontarians. But the spooky coalition's worst nightmare is a government that slashes taxes, put more money back in people's pockets, and gets things done. Because at the end of the day, we don't need trickery, Speaker. We need treat-worthy results. Happy Halloween, everyone. Thank you very much. That concludes our members' statements for this morning.